Hey guys, in this video, we'll be talking about irrational numbers and how we place those irrational numbers on a number line. Now, we've talked about in earlier videos the difference between what is a rational number and what is an irrational number. And the majority of square roots are irrational, except for the square roots that are perfect squares. So our object is, our objective is to place radical two or square root of two, square root of 17, square root of 11, square root of eight, and square root of five all on the number line. Now below, we want to have common, common um, radicals of some sort, where if we're discussing everything with radicals, let's convert what we know about the integer of one as a radical. So if we know integer one as a radical of radical one, and these are equal to each other, we're all on the same plane when we start organizing these irrational numbers or these square roots on a number line. So what equals two? Radical two times two is four, so radical four. Three times three is nine, so radical nine. And four times four is radical 16. Four times four is 16, so radical 16 is equal to four. Now that we have placed everything on a number line and we have organized our number line, so let's go ahead and see, let's organize these square roots from greatest, smallest to largest. So we're gonna put radical five over here. Let's switch the eight around. So we know when we put our numbers or our these square roots on a number line, they're gonna have to be in order from smallest to largest. Now I'm not gonna just drop them down and place them on the number line. I'm gonna strategically place them as best I know in the approximation. So if I look at radical two or square root of two, I know that we have a square root of one, square root of two, three, four. So we are going to look at square radical two. It's closer to one than it is to two or radical four. So I'm gonna keep that so it's not in the midway point. So it's a little bit before the middle point. Moving on to the next, moving on to the next um, example, radical five. I look at radical five, it's larger than radical four. And it's, but it's definitely less than radical nine. So I'm going to say it goes approximately right here. The halfway point, if I went the halfway distance, there is five radicals in between here. So two, three, probably radical six and a half, if that makes any sense. So that's why I know that I'm going to be right there, right there, five, then radical six, six and a half, seven, eight and then moving over to radical nine. Oh, radical eight is our next one. So let's go ahead. We know six and a half, seven, eight. It's gonna be closer in this area, in between 2.5 and three. Now radical 11, we ask ourselves, is it closer? Is it right there in the middle between radical nine and 16? Or is it closer to three or is it closer to four? And in this case, it's a little bit closer to um, three. So it's going to probably be right here close. And it's a pro pretty decent approximation. It's probably around 3.16 or 3.2, somewhere around in that area that we're talking about what is the equivalent of a radical 11. And then radical 17, we know it's going to be a little bit more than radical 16 down below and then we can organize. We don't have equal distances between the two because there are more radicals that could fit in between, but as the radicals get larger, obviously their number gets larger as well. But it makes it a lot easier to find out what our perfect squares are and what is the radical or the square root that is equivalent to that perfect square or that, that answer. So placing the bottom, placing these radicals that show the equivalence, it kind of helps us position our radicals in the best possible space. Mm -hmm.